and 60s, Eastside High School is among the vastly flourishing schools in Patterson, New Jersey. Joe is a teacher in this school and his class loves him because he teaches significant things with compassion but also entertain competitions. One morning, his class is intruded by a fellow teacher Frank, who told him they are holding a meeting at the Union Executive Council without them. Angry Joe bangs into the meeting and yells at everyone for not aiding his reform ideas, and always walking out immediately as the local government implores them to keep things quiet. Tired of Joe's attitude the board agrees to transmit him to another school. Twenty years later, Eastside High has disintegrated to the stage where it's named a cauldron of violence. The building itself has lost its glow and the students don't know the importance of good behavior, bullying and commotion are in every hall, they don't attend to teachers and even beat them up when they attempt to step in, and unlawful substances and arms are dealt as if they were confectionery. Vast of the students can't pass the lowest fundamental skills test, and this is terrible news for Mayor Botman, who doesn't wish to forfeit the school to state administration because it'll make him lose the election. Frank became school superintendent and Mr. Rosenberg the school board attorney, arrive at the only reasonable conclusion, they must bring Joe back. Botman doesn't like the plan, but he authorizes it because he doesn't have an option. Frank and Rosenberg went to see Joe, assigning the position of principal at Eastside, but Joe turns them down, narrating he knows the main reason, Botman only wants to protect himself and not the kids. Nevertheless Frank gets him to reverse his mind by indicating that Joe hasn't made a difference so far with all his crazy Joe routine and he shouldn't take that to his tomb. The following day, Joe appears at Eastside as the new principal. He had a meeting with the other teachers and instantly puts his authoritarianism into play, saying he's the only one that talks in his meetings. After inquiring of a list with the names of all students involved in unlawful activities, he mandates the custodian to tidy up the walls and make any student in internment to help him, Mr. Donnell the English teacher is downgraded to deputy of the football coach. There will be securities in the hallways to assist them prevent the violence, and all teachers must focus on getting the students prepared for their next standardized test, because the school requires 75% of approval, and last time they performed less than 40. Next Joe orders for a school assembly where all the rascals from the record are put on stage. When Joe arrives over he bumps into Kanisha, who is pleased to see him because he was her basic school principal. Joe gets on the stage and requests for silence, but nobody gave interest to him, and the troublemakers laugh when he inquires them to recite the school song. Looking them as incorrigible, Joe decides to expel all the radicals, assuring the rest of the kids that nobody will frighten them anymore. The guards takes all the students off the arena and this is enough to compose everyone else, particularly when Joe tells them they could be next if they don't read hard. In the afternoon Joe hold a meeting with all the parents. Leona the mother of one of the expelled kids is angered about what transpired and several parents backing her. But Joe doesn't give in and delivers a speech about a few bad apples spoiling the full basket. He disclosed he expelled 300 kids to protect 2,700 and that he assured God he would rescue this school. This speech attains him the assistance of almost all the entirely parents, but Leona remains angry. The subsequent day, Joe gets to school to discover a kid waiting for him. Sams was expelled and now attempts to tell Joe he made an error because he didn't commit anything, but Joe understands his lying and brought him to the roof with him. He calls Sams a wimp for not disclosing to his parents he was expelled and tells him using those unlawful substances will kill him, so if he wants to die this bitterly, he should jump. Sams openly rejects and vows he'll do better, and Joe agrees to give him another chance, but if he blunders again, he'll be off for good. At lunch Joe went from table to table listening to what the students have to say and giving some advice. He's delighted to see Ray is putting on a suit, which defines an excellent example, unlike Sams and his friends whose outfit sloppily. When he sees them worrying a girl, Joe makes them stood up and calls out their clothes choice in face of everyone, then inquires them to recite the school song. He also prompts the whole room that nobody should move during the school song. So when Donnell bends down to pick up some trash, Joe asks him to his office. The lads don't know the song making Joe to offer them detention and notify everyone that from now on, they all should be prepared to sing the school song on decree or there will be penalties. Afterward Joe proceeds to see the music instructor Elliot to inform her about the new regulation. Elliot agrees but she'll instruct the school song after they are finished training for a forthcoming choir concert in New York. The lads are rehearsing Mozart, and Elliot would like their work to be appreciated. She calls out Joe stating that she doesn't like other adults commanding to her, and Joe reacts by terminating her and dismissing the concert so the students can concentrate on the forthcoming examination, henceforth the pianist Mrs. Powers will be commanding the music class, afterward during his discussion with Donnell Joe gets called out again, Donnell feels he's being regarded as trash and expects the principal to know these are his students as well, this turns out with Donnell getting suspension, Vice Principal Joan attempts to make Joe see justification, clarifying Donnell is more than just an instructor and that nobody comprehends what Joe is doing, but Joe replies that's precisely how he prefers it. The day of the practice examination comes and all the students fill it the best their knowledge as the teachers maintain a close eye on them. Joe doesn't like to wait long for the results, so he sends Joan to the school board to ask for the letter immediately. One morning, the special presentation a student is performing for the local press is intruded by an attack in the cafeteria. 
One of the expelled boys came back and is beating up Ray he's also got a knife. Joe fastly grabbed him and surprises how he got in, security tells him someone must have let him in from the inside. At that minute, Joe decided all school entrances will be shut and chained. Few time later, Joe sees Kanisha feeling unhappy. She's a smart girl but her grades haven't been nice since she forfeited a place to live because her mother doesn't need her. Determined to assist, Joe brought Joan to see Kanisha's mother at her home. The mother says she had Kanisha when she was a teenage girl, so she had to drop her regular life to work. Currently she's aiming to get clean, which puts her in an unpleasant state of mind. That's why she felt it would be good to send Kanisha with child services, but she never stopped needing her around or loving her. Joe promises to assist her find a nicer job and a better place to stay as long as she accepts Kanisha back and enables her stay concentrated on her studies. The information of the chain doors got to the news media, and Leona takes the opportunity to take the criticism to the school board. Frank chastises Joe for acting this crazy, stating that Leona is establishing a committee to remove him and terminate the chief on her side. He feels Joe is estranging everyone like he did with his wife, so now he'll compose an apology letter to Elliot and Donnell, because if Joe needs to be regarded as an authority, he should begin by respecting authority as well. Donnell is reinstated, but the crises aren't over yet. The fire chief appears at the school with the media, so Joe makes him to leave while threatening him with a bat. Joan attempts to express her concerns over this behavior, but as usual she's ignored. To Joe's dissatisfaction, the following time he sees Ray is when the boy comes to say farewell because he can't keep up with this school any longer. After Joe sees Sam's and his friends goofing around in the bathroom. He makes them vocalize the school song and is surprised to hear a beautiful rendition done in the style of a church choir. The boy says it was Powers that instructed them this, so Joe goes to see her to compliment her and ask her to teach everyone this version of the song from now on. The outcome of the practice test arrive and Joe is dissatisfied to see they only scored 33%. He asks all the teachers to the gym and informs them their inefficiency is to blame for these poor results, so they have to operate harder. Joe wants to begin a coaching program and an extra course on remedial reading on Saturdays, but a teacher indicates it's difficult to make the kids come on weekends. His agenda is that they'll go to every student's house and talk to their parents to get them included, maybe even invite them to come too if they don't understand how to read. The subsequent weeks, teachers and students toil hard to get prepared for the test, and Joe's as engaged with his students as conceivable. This is still not suitable for Leona, who together with the fire chief goes to talk promptly to Botman. Frank and Rosenberg attempt to protect Joe, but Botman asks them out of the meeting and enters an agreement with Leona so she doesn't certify the town not to vote for him, Botman will get Joe terminated and Leona will gather people's assistance for his campaign. After in the bathroom, Botman tells the fire chief that they'll arrest Joe for the illegal necklaces after the test, not aware that Rosenberg is in one of the stalls and hears everything. Rosenberg informs Frank of this and they go to warn Joe, who instantly comes up with a strategy, when the security guards see the chief approaching, they'll alert code 10 through the walkie-talkies and the teachers can temporarily discard the chains. Afterward Joan attempts to talk to Joe regarding the progress of their reading strategy, but he tells her he's too occupied to look into it now and that his vice principal should work out things without needing him all the period. At the end of the day Joan requests Joe for a transfer explaining how intimidating it is to work with him. She calls him an egomaniacal windbag that crushes people who can't dispute back and levels out half the team feels the equal way, they just haven't resigned yet because they care about the kids. Joan nevertheless has had plenty of his lack of respect and assistance for the teachers, so she need to quit. The following day before assembly, Joe handles Joan her transfer papers, then he gives the kids a speech about the terrible prestige the school has in town, motivating them to prove they are not barbarians. He also expresses his appreciation towards the teachers, which he gives Joan recognition for. Following, Powers sings Lean on Me and the kids sing along, fascinated to reveal to the government they aren't inferior. Seeing the entire school come together, Joan determines to stay. On the test day the students fill the exam with confidence. But there's similarly a school board meeting coming and Leona can't linger anymore, so Botman eventually gives the fire chief authority to get a court order. Meanwhile at school Kanisha realizes she's pregnant, but her boyfriend doesn't think he's the father even if she vouches he's the only boy she's been with. Joe gives his support and pledges they'll find some other choices, but their conversation is intruded by a guard declaring the coming of the fire chief with Leona and journalists. Calling code 10 Joe attempts to get the chains discarded, but the chief is ready and has a recording of this code, so Joe gets apprehended for violating the fire code, leaving Joan in charge. That night the school cabinet holds a meeting. Frank attempts to uphold Joe's work, but Leona pinpoints the school only got 33% during the practice test, meaning Joe precisely failed at his work. The meeting is unexpectedly interrupted when all the student comes out demanding Joe be released. Botman realizes it'll look terrible if they terminate a man with such support so he talks to Joe inquiring him to ask the students to leave. When Joe rejects Botman takes out the big guns and says the cops are getting prepared outside. If the students riot things may get destructive, Joe agrees to talk to them but only for the sake of their protection, not because he feels they are doing anything wrong. When he comes out Leona is communicating with the kids. 
but she's only getting abused and recalling all the stuffs Joe did for the school. He's caressed when he hears them call him a father. But he's still uncomfortable about the police, so Joe takes position and remembers them to respect the law. His speech is unexpectedly interrupted by Joan who fetches the results of the tests with outstanding news, the school has finally passed. As everyone jubilant Joe told Botman that he and the state can go to hell. Joe gets to save his job and the students finish the night vocalizing the school song. When it's time for seniors to graduate, Joe gives off the diplomas. With supportive words modified for each student. This brings us to the end of the movie, and we do hope you like it, and please do subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, and as we go in to bring you more of your favorite movies, thanks for watching, and hope to see you soon.